Hello, welcome to another session on Information Systems for Managers in Anu's Classroom. So here in this video, we'll be talking about computer programming languages. So we will highlight, uh, we will talk about the major highlights and fundamentals and all the vocabularies of programming languages, the basics of how computers, uh, we communicate with computers and how we get to uh, make computers solve our pro problems, the basic concepts of programming, all the glossary and the jargons and stuff we use, a few of them a flow of control and uh, the various approaches uh, that could be taken for writing large programs because most of the enterprise requirements will need large programs. So don't worry, even uh, so this is just an icebreaker kind of unit. This is part of unit 11 of MMPC 8 from where it is taken. So this is just an icebreaker. If you are from the arts background or commerce background, you do not have any or even from the biology, you know, not a IT background. If you haven't had your undergraduate in any IT related things you might feel a bit apprehensive about this uh, do not worry this is just an icebreaker you are not expected to go in depth and if you have an IT computer science background even at least in your 12th standard also it will be vastly helpful to you know for us in this MMPC 8 because uh, people with that background who have that basic understanding will actually feel this a uh, cakewalk and others might feel a bit apprehensive, especially when we're talking about, you know, Java, Python, and all HTML. You'll be like, oh no, am I expected to learn to program in all these languages? No, you're not. All you are expected to do is to understand that these things are available so that as managers, you, you don't have to be fooled by your outsourcing vendors or your IT people. You know what they're talking. You can distinguish uh, the black grains, right? And uh, you can take better decisions. That is all. Just the eye, ground ice breaking thing. So let's get started. I've told enough. So communicating with computers. So to communicate with a computer, naturally, you will all be knowing we have to write a program, right? That is a code in a computer language, a language that the computer can understand, right? So naturally, the programs we write are intended or the applications we develop are intended to solve our problems. If you want to make somebody solve the problem or if you want to make somebody do work, we have to instruct them. So these codes have, these computer programs or codes will have instructions to the computer to uh, do a certain task in a certain way, right? So it means that for any problem to be solved by computers, what we have to do is write a program for solving the problem. And a computer program is this set of instructions or statements that are written in any computer programming language. And these programming languages are the only means by which we can communicate with these computers. So in other words, you can say that computer programs work as the interface between the person and the computer, the actual hardware. So how do we get computers to solve our problem? So maybe let us say an example. Suppose we want to our computer to be able to add two numbers and give us the sum. This is our problem. So what do we have to do? It needs a solution. So how do we get about it? We'll have to rack our own brains to see how we can solve this problem because computers are not magic ones which you just wave and all your problems magically disappear. No. You need to have an idea. You, as in not you exactly, but the people who are designing the software needs to have an idea of how we can, you know, get it done. Like what are the steps that we could take to solve this problem? That basic understanding has to be there. If it is not there, we cannot develop or we cannot spot a good uh, IT system, right? Or a uh, uh, solution, we cannot. That That is a necessity. So to so develop this problem, let us see what first we have to identify what we have, right? So we'll have two numbers with us because our problem was to so add two numbers. So what exactly do we need to do? We have to add them, simple, right? So if we have say one and four as two numbers, we have to do one plus four. So now think about it. How do we reach from this what we have to what we want so in your brain right you will add one say let's say one stick to four other sticks so we add this one stick to these bunch of four sticks which ta -da, brings us to a total of five sticks right so that is what's happening that is how we reached from what we had to what we wanted right so what we do now is we this is it. This is the solution. So we have to first create a mind map by writing down what we just did. So we start it. We will then ask the user to enter his first number. Then we have to say check if the number is valid. If the number is invalid, then you have to ask him to again enter the number. If it is valid, then you can ask him to enter the second number. 
if the second number is also valid like he has entered a b c or things like that or any special characters and all you have to check whether it's valid of course it is part of your qa quality assurance and testing right if he hasn't entered a valid number again we'll ask him to enter a valid second number and we'll do it keep on doing it until he gives us the valid number and once we have it we will add the first and second numbers together and we will show that result of addition to the user end of story tada right congrats you just wrote your first algorithm so what we just did here was create the algorithm for the problem so it's not as hard as you thought it might be right it is actually quite easy now the algorithm was quite simple because our problem was also very simple for complex problems like finding your covid vaccination solutions the algorithm will be complex enough but this is the basic thing this is what they were doing and uh, we have to come up with a working algorithm this is it this is a basic process right this is what everybody else is doing so in case you haven't subscribed yet humble request please consider subscribing and be a part of our community so that and hit the bell icon so that you get notified with every new video and uh, please join the community humble request if you have thank you so much for supporting my dream and helping me reach more people like you and helping them out as well so he said that to write a program or write a software create a software we need to do it in a programming language so how exactly do we go about choosing which programming language to use because we have a lot of them we have cobol we have java we have c c++ python ruby um scala and what what not right you open youtube and uh, you might have seen these ads like do you want to work in a fang company do you want to work in a mac company um, data science is the next big thing cloud computing is the next big thing uh, if you want to create a ch software like chat gpt what you need to do and all sorts those sorts of things right at least one video you must have come across so there is ample amount of choices just like how if you know if you just think okay just if you decide to start learning a programming language the first question that hits you is which one should i learn from these there are there are as many programming languages nowadays as there are as many number of grains of sand in a you know in a bunch of soil you pick up that's that many okay so there are many computer languages to write programs we can broadly classify all these things into three we have low level languages which is called machine level languages that are written using zeros and ones and that is the language that is understood by the computer zero actually indicates you think of it you think of a switch okay you on it it is one you off it it is zero so computer being computer and it the entire thing works on electricity and electrical components like transistors resistors capacitors and things like that you if you have opened or come across any open computer software system computer system you might see all these chips and wires running around it it is electricity right so that is the language the computer will also understand so zero means off one means on so depending upon whether you are offing the switch or oning the switch you are oning the switch twice uh, you you are oning two switches at the same time or maybe you are offing three switches at the same time all these different different things are what actually uh, you know these transistors and things like that they work in different different ways depending upon what input like uh, whether you off the switch or on the switch like that they work in different different ways that is the electronics part of it i'm not going into it because as managers we don't have to know about it either so that is what happens and that is how the machine works also the computer works that is how the programs tell the computer ultimately but that is not what we are seeing we are, we will be seeing uh, um, and we will be writing also human readable english like words and sentence uh, words and uh, symbols and everything getting used for writing these computer programs so what kind of a language are they we we'll come uh, come to it quite soon so the next type of language is the assembly level language which is actually written in mnemonic codes like add loop Uh, go to and things like you know small small mnemonics and things like that small small uh, it's not zeros and ones uh, we have words now coming up low like basic words like one word two word like that okay so that is assembly level language then comes the high level language which we have been talking about c c++ python java scala r ruby all these things they are all high level languages okay and these are written in english like languages and they are the easiest to understand among all these three so let's get coding then right we know all no just kidding we need to learn a few more things before we can get to code so what are they we need to talk about the basic concepts of programming just the bare minimum 
like identifiers they are the names that are given to various program elements like variables functions subroutines and all those things identifiers could consist of letters or numbers in any order but the first character should be a letter then we have variables which are program elements whose value can change during the execution of a program and that is why it is called a variable otherwise it will be called constants which are those elements whose values cannot be changed okay they have a fixed value like the value of pi or the armstrong number the speed of light they are all fixed they are all constants then we have something called as an expression which represents a single data item like a number or a character this expression may consist of a single entry like maybe it's a constant or a variable or it could be an array or a reference to a some function okay or it could consist of some combination of these entities which are interconnected by one or more operators operators as in it could be arithmetical operators like plus minus addition subtraction multiplication it could be relational like less than greater than or logical like and not or and things like that okay then generally and every high level programming languages also have built in data types like int is used to store whole numbers that is short for int integer okay float is used for storing decimal numbers or floating point numbers string is used for storing letters or words or combination of these things right so and in a computer programming language a statement we call a line of code that commands the computer to do something as a statement and every program will consist of a sequence of these statements and these statements could either be declarative statements input output statements like asking the system to asking the user to enter something or giving the result to the user things like that input output statements assignment statements or control statements or control structures like if your number is not valid then go back and ask the uh, and ask the user to enter the number again or if it is valid then go to the next step so these are control statements right so the execution of these computer programs usually happens sequentially that is statement which is written first will be executed first so to change the sequential execution of a program is where we use these control structures so we can either uh, use branching or selection statements or looping or iterative statements or even jump statements which will help the computer to jump or hop to a place um, maybe a few um, codes away or even an entirely in a different file also that is also possible so all these things if you are feeling overwhelmed please take a pause take a deep breath it's nothing you know nothing complicated if you're finding all these things quite difficult to grasp do not worry you know take some time and uh, read through your textbook or listen to this video a little more time you will get a hang of it worst case scenario i would suggest memorize it that's the worst case i don't think you will have to forcefully memorize it you will understand it it is easy enough but in case you are finding it difficult and you need more explanation on anything always always feel free to leave it out in the comment section i'll try my best to help you out okay so coming to writing large programs there are actually two ways to write a large and complicated computer program so one is that we can write everything in a single program okay which is seldom done the other is actually to look at the large program as consisting of several somewhat less complicated sub programs and we write each sub program that is what usually happens sub programs the task of completing each sub program will be assigned to a different different people and they all will be concentrating on their sub program and once it is done they'll all be integrated with each other to perform as a whole program so this process of breaking these large and complicated programs into smaller and less complicated sub programs is what is known as modular programming approach and each sub program is termed as a function or a subroutine or a module and things or other similar names depending upon the specific programming language that is used to write the program like um, in cobol it is called as a subroutine um java it might be called as a function python might call it as a module and things like that so i hope you understood a general idea and you broke the ice about computer programming languages thank you so much for uh, sticking with me till the end and i really hope that this video was of help to you thank you very much and i hope to see you in my next video where we will be starting with the block for units see you there bye bye